We touched briefly on the white balancing in the previous episode where we had to fix the green color cast in the skin tone and counteract for a green biased image in a landscape. If you want to check that episode, click the link in the description. We've all dealt with white balance issues due to wrong setting in camera, mixed lighting or color contamination from other sources in our scene. Some of those are easy to fix if we filmed our footage in a raw format, but if not, and before even trying, we'll have to understand the basic concepts that govern white balancing. In an age where consumer displays are becoming more color accurate than ever before, we still notice differences in how certain scenes might look different on two displays even from the same manufacturer. While screen calibration might get closer to the target, we will have to rely on scopes for a common denominator in white balancing. Recognizing a color cast is as simple as noticing one of the RGB channels sitting at different levels compared to the other two. The RGB parade reveals this in a clear way. Considering that you've already added contrast and saturation, notice how in this scene the blue channel is pushed compared to the green and red. You can read that in the waveform and histogram as well. In our case, we'll be using the RGB parade because it's visually addressing the imbalance and tells us which channel we need to fix. The offset wheel is a natural way of adjusting the white balance simply because of the way it responds as we move it around and acts as a global adjustment, resulting in an organic look. As a general rule, we want to counteract the color cast by going in the opposite direction of the color bias, which in our case is blue. So we can push the offset towards orange while checking the scopes until the blue channel levels out with the red and green. On the other hand, the RGB offset vertical color bars mirror the same offset adjustment with the difference that you can adjust each channel independently. This is great in situations where you have certain channels that are out of whack and you want to adjust them without affecting the others. These sliders are a carryover from traditional optical frame printers where color timers were using them to correct color contamination. A useful menu item to remember here is using the printer light hotkeys which maps the RGB printer points to your numeric keypad on the keyboard, effectively giving you discrete control over each RGB channel or the more classic cyan, magenta and yellow. In this image we can see that the green channel is sitting too high, so we just need to tap 5, the hotkey for lowering the green channel, on our numeric keypad to lower the level. A much more convenient way for adjusting the white balance is using the temp and tint sliders, reminiscent of the way you white balance in Lightroom or other similar applications. Temp referring to the warmth of the image and tint balancing for the green or magenta casts in fluorescent light sources. First check the RGB parade and see which channel needs adjusting, then counteract by using either the temp to move the hue on the orange and blue axis or the tint to adjust the magenta and green. For instance, this image sits too much on the magenta side and we can tell that by the lowered green channel in the RGB parade. Using the tint slider, we move in the opposite direction of the magenta cast, which is green, until the channels balance out on the RGB parade. The easiest way to understand this is by remembering that green sits diametrically opposite of magenta on a primary color wheel, so you should always counteract the color cast by going into the opposite direction. Same with the blue and orange color. Arguably, the easiest way to white balance an image is by using the white balance eyedropper and sample a neutral black, gray or white region in the image. Results are however mixed and sometimes not the ones we are expecting. Use your discretion with this tool and always judge the results by checking the RGB parade for a correctly balanced look. Ultimately, raw footage from high-end video cameras like the Blackmagic Cinema Pocket lets you access the white balance settings from the camera raw panel. In this case, click on Decode using Clip, then on any of the white balance presets or fine-tune the balance directly in the color temp slider using the Kelvin values for a warmer or colder image. Likewise, use the tint slider to compensate for magenta or green biased casts. The goal for this episode is to get familiar and confident with reading the scopes and understanding what needs to be fixed. By practicing this over and over again, it will become second nature to the point that you won't even need to look at the image while balancing, much like a pilot depending on the airplane's instruments to land the craft in the fog successfully. In our next tutorial video, we'll learn how to get a uniform and consistent look throughout the shoot and spot an eclipse that might need adjusting. See you next time!